What was I gonna film? Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. It's me, it's Natalie. Today, we are going to be filming something very, very exciting. Um, I actually have a meeting with my professor at, in like 30 minutes, so let's do this. So over the weekend, I'm filming this on a Monday, over the weekend, I finally binge read this trilogy that I have been dying to read since I first heard about it from my mutuals. I got an ARC for the last book and everyone loves these books, everyone is obsessed with them and I was like, you know what? This weekend I don't really have that much to do. Let me take the time and let me read them. And I'm so happy I did because I'm low-key having kind of a book hangover right now because I love these books so much and I'm still like in this mindset of these characters and this world and these relationships. So you're like, okay, what book is it? I finally read the Brown Sisters trilogy. I know, finally. I finally got on the hype. So yeah, so I had an arc for actor age Eve Brown and I was like, you know what? Let me just take the time and let me just binge read these books and let me see if I like them. And spoiler alert, I absolutely love them. So I just want to talk to you guys well, you know, like really talk to you guys about the first and second book and then tell you guys just overall what I liked about the third book because the third book isn't out yet, but you guys should go pre-order it because it's amazing. So before we get into it, I do want to mention that Talia Hibbert is a woman of color. She is black and the Brown sisters are black women and they are also plus size. So super diverse and super so let's get into it. First book of this. Okay, so quick overview. What is the Brown Sister Trilogy? This is, these are romances and each book follows a different sister and her troubles and her, you know, life and her potential suitor. So I had, I got the first book from Book of the Month and then I got the second book from like Target, I think maybe. And the third book, I got an arc. So the first book of the series is, or the trilogy, is Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Uh, we follow Chloe and Red, that's the name of her suitor. And I absolutely love this book. So I, okay, so each one of the books has like a, my favorite something of the series. So this one has my favorite guy of the series. I loved Red so much. Okay, so this one follows our main character, Chloe Brown. Uh, she kind of is our introduction to the world of the Brown sisters. Uh, she is struggling with fibromyalgia. Um, so she is in chronic pain. Um, she has trouble like wa like walking long distances. She has very, um, she just in pain. She has, a, she has a chronic illness, right? And when we see her, she is pretty much living a life of not solitude, but she pretty much has these really high walls around her because she has been burned in the past by her fiance and her friends who kind of abandoned her because of her chronic illness. They didn't know how to handle it. So they pretty much were, you know what? And they abandoned her. And so she's close with her family though. And she, in the prologue, she kind of has a brush with death. And she's like, you know what? I haven't lived. And it's kind of my fault, but also because I am, you know, chronically ill and I want to live. So she comes up with this list to get a life and the first one is moving out. So she moved out, she got an apartment and the superintendent of that apartment is Red. So she realizes that she needs help to accomplish this list and while she is very attracted to Red, she's like, you know what, I want him to help me. So I loved, so that's kind of the setup, right? So it's basically Red helping Chloe get a life. I love this book so much. The romance aspect of it, not we'll get to smut a little bit but the romance aspect of it just seeing the banter and the kind of friendship and then eventual love that red and chloe foster it's so 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 well done and it's such a good it was like a breath of fresh air just because they were like by themselves so like red also has his he was in an abusive relationship and so he has his own baggage and just the healthy way that they progress like themselves and then also the way that they come together in a relationship it's so like healthy and i loved 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 oh, I don't it was so healthy and i absolutely loved reading it and it was so refreshing just because nowadays like there are <laughs> dark romances and all that are getting popular and obviously i love i like a dark romance but i remember like how good just a good fluffy smutty romance is so the smut in this is so good 
the smut in all of the three books are good talia hibbert knows how to write her smut i absolutely i couldn't believe it i was kind of i was blushing me miss aoa3 pretty much has seen it and read it all was blushing i was like this was still nowhere near the level of aoa3 smut but it was still prime prime so i loved it i thought red was so 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 cute and he was so understanding and he helped chloe and talia hibbert thank you so much she writes she, uh, people don't like this but she writes miscommunication tropes i love miscommunication tropes that is my favorite like one of my favorite top three like holy grail tropes in a romance i need that miscommunication or that kind of angst that miscommunication brings she writes that and she also writes um, so miscommunication is present in all her three books and also the third act breakup scene like the last like final showdown between the two before they you know get back together i love that i absolutely love that i think that angst is perfect so people don't like it because it is true that in the last breakup scene you know in any not just these but like in any romance that last third act breakup scene things are said sometimes things are said that is very kind of a low blow and people have criticized it saying that like in that heat of the moment like you can't really even hear your partner your significant other saying that and like you how do you get past that i don't mind that maybe because i kind of have like an unhealthy viewpoint of relationships but i don't mind that i think that brings angst i think that brings that extra drama that i love so honestly yeah like if they cuss each other out i'm like hell yeah get down to it like take your low blows like i love that but yeah so but she doesn't tell you doesn't do like low blows here but she does do like you know like third act breakup scene angst because of miscommunication that's what she does um and i loved it i loved it because it wasn't so dark that i was kind of like taken out of the relationship and i was like mm, that's really dark you know but it was perfect for the amount of like romance and fluff and smut that we got this it was like a perfect balance of angst and miscommunication at the very end so I really love this. I really, really, really love this. Spoiler alert, they do get together. And spoiler alert, Chloe, Chloe Brown does get a life. But she gets it with Red. I absolutely love this book. It was really, really good. And some people do say it was a little bit boring. And I get that because the first 50 pages, I kind of had to like get kind of like really, really, really like try to care about these characters and the relationship. But it, pan it panned out. See, I do this thing in, in like my romances where if I don't care enough about the characters and the relationship that i'm given i will insert my my own like favorite couple in it i'm not gonna say which couple i inserted in this one but i inserted a couple for like the first like 50 pages where like i was like oh chloe is gonna be this person in my mind and like red is gonna be this person in my mind uh because they're like similar and that way i can actually like get into this book and then i switch that off when i start caring about the characters and the relationship so for this one it took me like 50 pages for me to switch that off and be like okay now i care about chloe right now i'm good so it was really really good and i highly recommend that one i think it is perfect uh you don't have to start with that one like none of these books are not so like for example like in this one chloe and red are just like mentioned here and there but uh you do see that they're together so if you want to see how they got together then you should read them in order but it's not necessary you don't have to um so then the second one so this one has a favorite guy pick a hint chloe take a hint danny brown is my favorite sister i love danny just because i feel like she is me as in like her viewpoints and her stance and her thoughts on like commitment and relationship and love i related to that so much i was like yes that is exactly how i feel so take a hint danny brown i kind of have more criticisms i still gave it five stars i loved it i loved it i loved it don't get me wrong i absolutely loved it easy as five stars all of these three books but i do have some criticisms in danny brown just because for this one like i said i saw myself more in this one and so i kind of clashed a little bit um so basically this one we have danny uh she is very no relationships no commitment no 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 she's like no i'm not good at relationships i'm not good in commitment so i'd rather just steer clear of it that way i don't hurt anybody and i don't hurt myself right and so in the beginning she kind of prays to a goddess saying hey listen i need a new like friends with benefit like situation like bring me a new person right so she's just like bring me a hint to guide me to that person so that's why it's called take a hint danny brown 
And so she uh, is kind of friends. She has a budding friendship with the security guard in the building that she works in, right? She's just a TA. She's a teaching assistant in university. She's getting her PhD. And it's a buddy relationship. Like, they're attracted to each other, but, like, not really. Like, they're friends, right? She's like, yeah, you're my friend. That's cool. Um, and then, uh, so he, his name is Safir Zaf. He is, I think he's um, Muslim, I want to say. And he is an ex-rugby star. He also has his own personal baggage that he's been dealing with right he has anxiety and um he his family died like his dad and his brother got died in a car accident and he didn't handle it well with the media and just himself and basically he quit his rugby life and is now living in this mundane life right to try to get over it because he has anxiety and all that um and he has this foundation that he created for guys who for young boys who want to be uh either a professional like sports person a professional sports person a professional ath athlete or a someone who sh um or just someone who struggles with like masculinity and their own like thoughts and anxiety and they can use um you know athleticism to help with that so he has that foundation but it's not doing so well because he hasn't disclosed that he was a kind of popular athlete and uh he doesn't want to just because he doesn't want people to get up in his business anymore because he does has had that past that past right so we so we see Zaf and danny and then this fire drill happens Danny doesn't know it's fire drill she gets stuck in the elevator Zaf comes to her rescue uh heroically uh it gets filmed and it goes viral right it they're, they're called dr rugby yeah it goes viral and all of a sudden all of this money is coming into Zaf's foundation and he's like listen Danny can we pretend to date um and then we'll just do it for like a month just until like all this money stops pouring in and then we'll break up and then he's like okay like it's for a good cause right whatever I don't really like fake dating I just don't or friends with benefits. I don't, a friend, no, fake dating is whatever. I don't, I meant friends with benefits. I don't really like friends with benefits, but then I kind of pinpointed that I don't like friends with benefits when it's people that have already been friends, you know? Like if it's just someone that you're kind of like buddies with or someone that you just met, uh, you had a one night stand with, and then you're like, hey, listen, like let's be friends with benefits. So don't really should, but like let's be friends with benefits. I'm fine with that. But if you know the person, if you have been friends for like a while before and then the miscommunication, because obviously, obviously friends with benefits always comes with miscommunication. Um, and then the miscommunication comes, it's like, okay, that, that's when I'm like, no, the miscommunication is like either too dumb or too far. Like, no, you know the person, like, you know when that person likes someone, you know when that person has feelings for someone, you know when that person is upset for some reason, like, you know that person because you're friends with them. No, that miscommunication just gets me angry. But if it's like budding relationship, like budding friendship, like barely started being friends or like friends, but like more like acquaintances, I'm fine with that. That's why I was fine with this one with Danny and Zaf, just because, like I said, they knew each other at the very beginning. Like they knew each other, they were friends. Like they brought each other like coffee and like protein bars and everything. But it wasn't like, oh my God, you're my best friend. So like it was fine, right? Uh, they became close as their little fr fake dating friends benefit situation happens. Uh, spoiler alert, they become friends benefits <laughs> just because, yeah, they are very attracted to each other. Um, and so then that's when the mis miscommunication starts because Danny realizes that, hey, listen, like I don't want to be in a relationship, right? Okay, so the third act breakup scene, that's when the whole miscommunication starts, of course. I, that's where I have my problem with. Up until that point, I liked Zafir, not as much as Red. Obviously, I didn't really want to compare, but like, I feel like Zafir's a, a Scorpio. <laughs> he's very like, he's he loves romance books, right? So he's very like intense with his feelings and his romance. I don't like Scorpios at all. I'm just, I'm an Aries. Like I can't do that intensity, lovey-dovey. Like I love romance, happy ever afters. I can't do that. I'm just not that kind of person. But obviously like, no. Um, and so I feel like he's a Scorpio. But like I said, like I'm not gonna like hate someone if they're Scorpio. But like I just know like already our personalities don't match. Like I've had it in the past where like, with like past like boyfriends and like past best friends like have been Scorpios and they we've clashed and it's just not a good time so I kind of knew that was like oh Zephyr's not gonna be the one for me like right away I could tell how intense he was and I was like oh this guy's a Scorpio he's this guy's a Scorpio and but I still give it a fair shot obviously because I really love Danny so I was like you know what Danny if you love him go for it so then Danny was like, listen, like this is getting really intense. I told Zafir from the very beginning that, hey, listen, we are not doing this thing right now because I don't do relationships. Remember, Zafir obviously catches feelings. Danny does too. She gets scared. She runs. And that's when 
the third act breakup scene happens. So I didn't really like the way that Sophia was talking to Danny, kind of not, kind of like about her feelings and about her relationship. Like Sophia was saying that like, like, like not everyone, like not like you're not supposed, like how do I explain it? She, he was kind of like, everybody's good at relationships, right? Like you don't just fail at relationships. Like it's either like you guys are not incompatible or you guys aren't like compromising, but like no one is bad at relationships. And he was telling Danny, he was like, Danny, you're amazing, you're beautiful, you're smart, you're compassionate, you're kind, you're thoughtful. Obviously you're not gonna be bad at relationships. And Danny was like straight up saying like, dude, like, no, like I understand that I have positive stuff. Of course, I know I love myself. I'm a queen. I know that. I'm like, that's right, Danny. She was like, I know I'll have all these positive ad attributes to myself, but I'm still bad at relationships. And that's fine. But that's when like Sophia was like, no, 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 no. Like, and they started fighting or whatever, right? And then that's when at the very end, and I didn't really like the way that they resolved their dad breakup scene. I love the way that Chloe and Red did it. I didn't really like it how Sophia and Chloe and Sophia and Danny did it here. Um, they kind of, Danny kind of had, like, obviously Zephyr apologized, but Danny was the one who reached out, uh, and apologized. I didn't really like that, um, just because in this one, the third act breakup scene, the miscommunication was kind of on Red's point, so obviously he was the one who reached out and apologized to Chloe. This one, I didn't really feel like it was Chloe's fault, I feel like it was a mutual thing, and I didn't really like the fact that they kind of blamed it on Chloe, even though, again, Zephyr was like, I'm sorry, like, I apologized, me too, like, I was in it, but Chloe was like, no, it was mainly me. So she resolves it by talking to like her loved ones and realizing that yes, she can be in a relationship and he has, she can be committed, she can be in love and she loves Sevier, right? Like I said, that's fine. I just didn't like the way that they resolved it in that like, like, like Jenny was right. Like not everyone is good at relationships and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. You can still be in a relationship and be bad at relationships like obviously like Danny is like oh I'm not gonna remember like our anniversaries like I don't do anniversaries like I don't really like Valentine's Day that's obviously that's like couldn't like stereotypically that's being bad at relationships right because obviously our relationships you're supposed to remember your anniversaries you're supposed to at least celebrate something with your with your loved one like in Valentine's Day right if the other one does want to celebrate Valentine's Day and Sophia does want to celebrate Valentine's Day and anniversaries right I didn't like the fact that she was basically trying to tell him like hey listen I'm not good at relationships and Sophia was like no 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 everyone's good at relationships it's like no not everyone is good at relationships and that's fine and like but what I did like the weird fact about like that there is compromise in relationships and yes there is obviously if you're bad at relationships you'll find someone who can compromise with you and be like hey listen I know you're bad at relationships I'm good at relationships we'll celebrate this anniversary or like not this one and like we don't have to celebrate Valentine's Day that's fine that's compromise that's compromising with someone who's bad at relationships I didn't like the fact that they kind of made it seem that like everyone's supposed to be good at relationships no <laughs> no that's not the case that's not the case and I didn't like that so I didn't like that and then I also didn't like the fact that at the very end when Danny was which I get obviously um I okay so at the very end Danny kind of starts celebrating the anniversary and everything because she loves Zaf so much she's like yeah I remembered our anniversary right was that a British accent <laughs> I hate it when characters kind of have to change themselves for other people, but because that was an epilogue and we literally only had three pages of it, I didn't know if she was again compromising, which is fine, or if she was actually like she really did change herself. I, again, I don't really know, it was only three pages, that's why I really want to comment on that, if she really did change herself or whatever. Um, but yeah, so the third eye breakup scene didn't really vibe with Sophia just because he's very intense and I was like, mm. um, it didn't really vibe with the third eye breakup scene just because it was for dumb reasons. I hope I made that clear, right? I mean, I'm not saying that like, I'm not saying that like, you know, like I, I hope I made my point clear about being bad at relationships, like that's fine. But also like, you should compromise. If you are the person like, who's a fear was like really celebrate stuff don't go for someone who's bad at relationships right and don't make them feel invalidated for not being good at relationships validate their feelings that if they truly feel that's what it was like if they truly feel like they're bad at relationships don't try to be like no no no, you're good no no, no you're fine that's why Danny was like no I get that I'm a queen I understand that but I'm telling you this is how I feel like validate my feelings that's what I didn't like so always validate your significant other's feelings please for whatever reason so yeah so maybe if it was longer maybe if that breakup scene was longer or something i don't know maybe it would have been fine if like danny was one who didn't who had to apologize i don't know so that was it still gave five stars though because the smut scenes were and the whole i love danny i loved the take on it and then there was this one scene where they talked about um they were like oh like you should go after whatever makes you happy right obviously in that scene it was going after Zafir. like they told like um 
basically Danny's role model told her like, hey, listen, like you should go after whatever makes you happy. Danny took that as going after Zephyr because Zephyr makes me happy. I took it as like, you should always just do whatever makes you happy. I literally took a picture of it and I don't remember what it said, but it was basically she had asked her, um, she asked her, where is it? Yeah, she said, but all that can be exhausting. So make sure you take care of yourself too. There's great value in the things that bring you joy. Um, and then she said, um, is it a bad sign if all the things that bring me joy seem to be vaguely absurd? Certainly not. That's what her mentor said. Certainly not. She said, um, major or minor, if something keeps you human when pressure makes you feel like a volcano, hold on to that thing by whatever means necessary. Again, I know she's talking about like Danny takes her as a fear, but I took it as like an overall thing. I love that scene. I love that scene. I literally took a picture of it because I was like, that is everything like yes it doesn't matter how absurd it is it doesn't matter how big or small it may seem whatever helps you get through the pressure and the stress and anxiety of your daily life and just life in general hold on to that and do it doesn't matter how dumb you think it is doesn't matter how absurd you think it might be if that brings you joy that's all that matters love that like i said that's why i loved it okay finally actor h e brown so this was claire brown was our oldest sister and then this Danny was our middle sister and Eve Brown is our, our younger sister. So Eve Brown, Eve, e -E, <laughs> was kind of hinted like she was a big character like here, like in there because obviously his sister, but she's, she's fine, right? So Chloe is very um, like walls up, very prim, very proper. And then Danny is very um, non-commitment, like what is love? I don't really care, right? But she's cool. They're, I mean, they're all cool, but like she's like very like cool. Like she's like cool about everything. Um, and then Eve is very whimsical, fun, funny, life of the party, right? She's a younger sister and um, outgoing, bubbly, and everyone loves her. And But she's the baby. She's the baby. And so that's why it's called Actor H. Eve Brown. So the premise of this is basically Eve has been floating through life, right? She's been trying to find something that sticks career, friends, a relationship, but nothing really can stick. Um, and so we start off with her basically um, having a disastrous um, time in one of her career ventures. And her family basically tells her after age, she runs away because she's like upset. And she's like, wait, I need to think, rethink my entire life. And she arrives at this bread and breakfast. She interviews for a cook position there uh, by, and it's uh, the two people who are interviewing here are Jacob, Jacob Wayne, and his best friend. And Jacob is super, super, super proper, right? Super, super proper, super very like straight and like down the line, like no funny business, um, very sarcastic. And when she he sees Evie, he's like, absolutely not. He's like, I don't know who the hell this girl thinks she is, but absolutely not. She is not coming into my establishment and ruining everything. She's like too much. And then Evie's like, oh well. So she goes into her car. She's about to leave. Um, and she runs him over by accident because the Jacob and his friend Mont Rose, they're in a very um, tight situation. They need someone. They need someone to cook. And so they're like, fine, Evie is like our best bet. Let's go find her they find her it's raining pouring like it's pouring rain and she doesn't see jacob and she runs him over so he has like a concussion some bruised ribs i think he his wrist his arm his wrist or his arm is fractured and so he needs help so evie had already um accepted a, another um job and so she was like okay that can i can like put off that job for a couple like for like a month and in the meantime i will come and i will help jacob and make sure that his establishment is running because i was the one who ran him over i will make sure that he is fine and everything is good and then i will leave so she's like i will be here just to make sure she's fine he's fine jacob's like i mean i guess you ran me over like i really do need someone like i guess so that's the premise um it's basically them having to run this bed and breakfast and stuff happens i love this this was my favorite relationship like eve and jacob i love them they were kind of grumpy sunshine not really um i would kind of say enemies to lovers just because she really did run him over like she didn't have the intention to kill him but like she could have um, this was funny the banter between them was amazing the smut i literally tweeted saying on like my private account i literally tweeted saying like this is the closest i've seen a published work and i have read a lot of new adult this is the closest i've seen 
published work get to AOA3 smut level? Obviously not on the same level, but this is the closest. Like the smut levels for this was insane. I thought it was so freaking good. Like I thought these two were crazy, it had me blushing. The, like I wrote on my Kindle, Evie, Evie Brown girl, you, <laughs> Evie Brown girl. I thought Jacob, oh, Jacob. There were moments where like I literally thought they were gonna reach AOA three moments smut. Like there was parts where I was like, oh, like here it is. But then they kind of like back down, like some of like the king stuff. I was like, oh, and then they kind of like died down. And I was like, damn it. I'm like, just one more step. But like the fact that it got that close, that's literally the closest I've seen. And I'm telling you, I read a lot of new adult dark romance stuff. This was just really, really good. There's something about it that was so freaking good. The relationship, the th again, like I said, it's no big news, no big spoiler, but there is a third eye breakup, miscommunication amazing amazing i loved it the eggs that i was given yes i thought it was so freaking good so yeah that is it i really recommend it i think you guys should go pick it up i think it is a perfect conclusion to this trilogy and you do see cute moments between red and chloe and Zephyr and danny and of course we see Gigi and shivani shivs <laughs> and we see more of her parents this time actually all of them the mom and dad uh joy and martin so i thought it was really good and i highly recommend it uh especially if you are a fan of the brown sister trilogy i feel like this is a perfect conclusion to it and you won't be disappointed it's more of the same claudia hibbert knew what she's like know what she's doing like she she writes in the same manner like very funny you know same kind of tropes very good smut but the fact that she could bring to life three different relationships and three different sisters that are so different from each other and still like let us believe that they're different like it's not like they're in the same voice like a lot of times people are doing dual point of views or like they're continuing the series from different characters points of views you can kind of tell that it's written by the same person just because you know like it's it's common right you can tell they're written by the same person um but literally like this was amazing <laughs> like the only people that i've seen this like like this like do it is in my holy grail show i thought that she did such a good job in like obviously we could tell that it's like written by her but like the way that she wrote it like we could still like it was just different it wasn't like more of the same like it was obviously the same kind of like style of like not smile smut but like the same like writing of smut like still like excellent but different like substance and like the same like like tropes but like in a different way and like these brown sisters that like we love but they're so different from each other and it's and it was good it was just good so like yeah like she like i said like obviously you can tell when someone is writing in the same manner but the way that she did it um you just it was just perfect it wasn't boring it wasn't repetitive that's what it was it wasn't repetitive it wasn't boring so yeah so i highly recommend this and i think people will absolutely love it like love it um so yeah that is it i recommend this entire trilogy i'm so happy i finally read it i loved it i loved it i loved it and i can't wait to see what talia hibbert puts out next because she is amazing amazing does she have other books i might check out i wonder if she has a backlist hmm. i'm gonna see that um so yeah so i just thought i'd come on here and share with you guys what i read over the weekend i um hopefully will be reading more romances i forgot how good romances were these put me back into a romance i forgot how good it is so thank you guys so much for watching um if you guys know any other like romances that have like the miscommunication third act breakup scene trope please let me know because i love that i know people don't like that like at all that's like number one hated tropes i absolutely adore that i think that is amazing and writers need to write that more <laughs> that's just me i'm in the minority for that um but if you guys know any books that really have that please let me know i'm always on the lookout for more um so yeah so thank you guys so much for watching i will catch you guys in the next one stay safe and go read your favorite book for me bye